Thank you so much. How are you? Excellent. It is great to be here. I need to tell you, I'm so excited to be here to talk to you. Uh, this, this particular event, this camp, has been a major part of my life. I actually started teaching at this camp when I was not much older than most of you. I started in the, basically the, the, the late 80s. And here I am in 2016, and I am still here. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Glad to be here. Now, this presentation is going to be a little bit different. Because when Fran Kick asked me to come and speak to you, he said, you know, what, what do you really, what do you wish that we could address with our leaders of tomorrow? These incredible musicians, these incredible band people, these incredible leaders in our arts education, uh, what do you want to say to them? And so I really thought about it, and I got to tell you, I, I, it was a little bit of a shift for me, because we're going to discuss something tonight that I think might be the most important thing, not just for our arts world, but I mean for our country and actually for our entire world. And you're going to you'll understand here just a little bit more in a minute. We're going to start talking about leadership, but we're going to be talking about leadership through creativity. How many of you consider yourself a creative person? Excellent. How many of you believe music is a language? Okay. Is it the universal language? Excellent. Okay. The dictionary defines literacy. How many of you consider yourself a literate person? Raise your hands. Good. Put them back down. The dictionary defines literacy, the ability to read and to write in a given language. How many of you read English? How many of you can write in English? Good. Put your hands down. How many of you can read music? How many of you write music? That's my point. Look at the hands. How many, and, and by the way, there are very few in this audience right now. There's 500 of you in here. Very few are doing this. Everybody's kind of, you're not quite sure. Okay? Some of you just went, no, I don't write. By definition, we're not musically literate. Many of us aren't. We've got to fix that. Okay? Leadership through creativity. This is a key objective for you, our future leaders of tomorrow. But I've got to tell you, and we're going to talk about it very seriously, it is a responsibility. We have a responsibility to be creative humans. And we're going to talk about why in just a brief second. Okay? All right, why focus on creativity now? I got to tell you, and very serious, this is not fun. Right now, the challenges we currently face on our planet are without precedent. This has never happened before. I'm talking to you about this now because it's your problem. I'm too old to be able to fix this. I will be gone before this comes to fruition. So my objective here is to make sure that you're ready to inherit the world that we, my generation is leaving you. All right? More people live on this planet now than any other time in history. Our population has doubled in the last 30 years. And that rate is getting faster and faster and faster. 20 years from now, we'll have twice as many humans on this planet as we do right now. You think about that for a second. Uh, our, we're facing an increasing strain on our world's natural resources. We're not going to be able to feed ourselves if we're not very careful. Technology is advancing at a headlong rate of speed and transforming how we think, how we work, and how we even connect with each other. Would you agree with that? Your generation, is it okay to have a long distance relationship now? Yes or no? Yes. My generation, that, that wasn't a thing. We weren't willing to wait on the letter to show up. Okay? For you? Uh, how many of you have been, quote, dating somebody but never met them? Be honest. Raise your hands, please. Notice you see some hands going up in the air. That is now a thing. Okay? All right? It's transforming the way we connect with each other. And it's transforming, as a result, our cultural values. That's a big deal. Why focus on creativity now? If we examine the strains on our political and financial institutions, if we examine the strain of this population increase on our health care, if we examine all of these in their totality, we actually will realize that this has never happened before in the history of mankind. It has not happened. You can't look back and say, oh, this is happening again, because it has not. It just isn't the same. As a result, this is really new, and we're going to need every ounce of your ingenuity, of your creativity, and of your imagination, and most importantly, along with that, your leadership in order to get our world past this. Music and the arts are the most powerful of all the subjects 
We'll talk more about that in just a second. It's the only place where we actually put everything together and we get people working in a collaborative fashion, working together in incredible ways. Don't you do that in your bands, yes or no? Yeah, absolutely. If our world worked as well as our marching band, we'd be in a really pretty good place. And I gotta tell you, I'm 57 years old and I've never been this worried about our planet. Even over the past four weeks, I've never been this worried about our planet. Okay, so it's very important. We are depending upon you. Why focus on creativity now? We're living in times of massive unpredictability. Would you have ever thought the events of the last four weeks, six months ago, would you have ever thought that was going to be there? Look at our political systems and what's going on. You know, we, I mean, look at our presidential election, okay? <laughs> I'm just calling it out like it is. If you were a betting person, would you have bet on that a year ago? No. We are living in times of massive unpredictability. The students that are starting in kindergarten this year, now they're the generation that's behind you. But here's our problem. We're sitting here in our public school system on a system that was designed a long time ago. You're the ones that are in it right now, but the ones that are coming into it now, they're going to, if they ever do retire, they're going to be retiring in the year 2076. Think that through. Some of you are just four to five years away from maybe even being a teacher in a school and trying to work with people that are going to retire. At that time, it'll be 2081. That's a big deal, okay? Nobody has a clue what our world's going to look like in five years. We don't have a clue of what our world's going to look like next year. Is that a fair statement? Yes or no? Yes. Absolutely, okay? Yet, it's been our traditional job of education. You're all here for educational reasons. It's been our traditional job to, you know, help you, help our students make sense of the world in which they live. I contend now that our educational system, our role has changed. Our responsibilities have changed. And in, particularly in arts, arts education, in music, we have changed. It is no longer about let's have fun, let's learn about some music. We have got the responsibility to help fix what may be not the most pleasant future as we start looking forward. We'll talk more in just a second. For my generation, I was born in 1958. That's a long time ago, okay? That's a very <laughs> long time ago. Actually, truth be known, I'm so old, the Marine that just talked to you was a student of mine. All right? The comedian that's going to talk to you after me was a student of mine. That's pure coincidence, by the way, the fact that we're all together. I can look around the room, see that old guy over there, Mr. Snow? He was a student of mine. Okay? All right? So let's look at this. Uh, my generation, we were told if you worked hard, you did everything you were supposed to do, you went to college, got your degree, you're going to be set for life. However, our world does not think that's true anymore. Do you think that's true? No, okay? It is not true anymore. Most of us don't. Yet we're still continuing to run our school systems. We're running our band programs. We're running everything the same way as if it were true. This is time for a change, okay? Many people have degrees now that are depreciating in value. That's not something you are really aware of. The adults in here know exactly what I'm talking about. Look at their heads, yes or no? Yeah, they know it. They're depreciating in value. You're about to invest $50,000 plus. Most of you are going to end up with some really great scholarships, but somebody's paying for it, and that degree, is it going to increase in value, will even stay as valuable, or is it going to decrease in value? That's a big deal, okay? Uh, being creative is going to be essential for us, and it's going to be essential for our economy, all right? We, what we are looking for out of you, I'm going to teach you a new term tonight. It's called disruptive innovation. We need you to be disruptive innovators. Sounds kind of fun, doesn't it? Okay? Let me tell you what disruptive innovation is, though. Disruptive innovation is when you create something new that does something that has never been possible ever before. All right? For example, again, if you're my age, I look at my Apple Watch here, and if you're really old, I realize I'm Dick Tracy. Okay? All right? You know what I'm talking about. Dick Tracy. Boy, when I got my first flip phone, I thought I was Captain Kirk. Okay? <laughs> awesome. All right, but guess what? Something like a phone, an Android, an iPhone, 
a smartphone. That does something that, you know, that, that does something we didn't think was possible. It was a disruptive innovation. Another form of disruptive innovation is when you do something that everybody knows is possible, but you do it at a price point where it's available to everybody. Wouldn't it be really great if we could get a computer in every human's hands in the entire world? Yes or no? Absolutely. Okay? That would be a disruptive innovation. You are the generation that are going to be responsible for disruptive innovation. Say it with me. Disruptive innovation. One more time. Disruptive innovation. Do not forget that term. That is going to be a life changer for you. Okay? Some of you, 10 year, years from now, you're going to go, oh my God, I just figured out what that guy was talking about. All right? I hope it comes sooner than that. All right? Let's talk about creativity misconceptions. A lot of people think that creativity, it's about special people. Isn't this a great room? Because we're all special people, aren't we? Yeah? Okay? Oh, it's special people. It's those artists, you know? It's those people. I believe, though, that every human has tremendous capacity. Every human has a superpower. It's our responsibility to find that superpower. You just heard uh, Julie Duty come out and start talking about different types of learners. They all have a superpower. It's our job to bring that superpower out in every human on this planet. If we start working for each other instead of against each other, we live in a better environment. Would you agree? Okay? People think it's about special activities, the arts. You're all, you are all artists. Oh, it's about those musicians, those visual artists. When in actuality, people associate creativity with the arts only. They think that in actuality, creativity is a function of everything we do. Everything we do. And it is so vitally important. You ever heard the term medical arts? Medical arts? Creativity is a function of everything we do. Education for, our cre for creativity should be about the entire curriculum. It should be implemented in every single class, not just part of it. You are lucky you're in arts classrooms because you're getting at least a part of it. But our problem right now is we've got to do it with everybody, okay? Creative misconceptions. It's about, people think it's just about letting yourself go. Get crazy, be one of those eccentric artists, run around and do that. The reality, though, is that creativity is a disciplined process that requires skill, it requires knowledge, and it requires control, self-discipline. It's really, really important. How many of you know me as a composer? Raise your hands, please. Okay? Whole lot of hands here. Please understand that every composition starts out as just kind of improvising. Okay? Playing around with ideas. But to bring the piece to fruition, I, had to go through a, I have to go through a process to get it into its final form. Even then, it's got to be produced so it makes it out to the musicians of the world. All right? So it's ever-increasing levels of, of uh, uh, I'll call it uh, discipline, in order to bring that idea to the world. All right? Creativity requires imagination, inspiration. It requires a daily and disciplined path of education. Very, very, very important. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. The reality is in here, some of you are going to be musicians. You, all of you are going to be musicians for life. Music for all, music for life. That's, that's there. That's not a problem. But are you going to be a professional? Yes, you're all going to be professional, but most of you will not be professional musicians. That means making 50 plus percent of your income in music. I am a professional musician. I make mine in music. There are doctors in here. There are lawyers in here. There are accountants in here. There are scientists in here. There are people every walk of life in here. Fortune 500 companies, what they say now very clearly is that we need people who can be innovative and who can think creatively. It's no longer about the one that has the most amount of knowledge in their head. All they got to do is pull out your phone. You can look up the knowledge you don't have in your head in a couple of seconds. Fair statement? Yes or no? Okay. So now it's about how can you be creative with that information? How can you make a difference? And Fortune 500 companies, this is what we want to do. These are our resources. How can we make this happen? That's what they're looking for. There is plenty of work out there, but they're looking for creativity. An arts education, music education, is, is the most effective environment to teach and to learn creativity, both now and in our future. Now, creativity is interesting. Do you create as an individual or do you collaborate? That's a big question. I will tell you our world has changed. You've got to learn to collaborate. You're here. You know how to collaborate. You're in a band. Okay? You're in a band. That's very important. Okay? Most original thinking starts through collaboration, through the stimulation of other people's ideas, and most things benefit enormously through, through collaboration. All right? With that in mind, let's talk about two great innovators. Edison, 
Jobs, Thomas Edison and Steve Jobs. There's no doubt they both changed our world. Fair statement? Okay, very good. Uh, Thomas Edison, one of those prolific inventors, 1,100 patents, but his greatest talent was coming up with a vision, mobilizing people, setting deadlines, and getting the job done. When you look at Steve Jobs, arguably one of the greatest minds of the last 50 years, he transformed our culture, he transformed our world. You can thank him for that phone that's in your pocket. He's the guy, all right? But his greatest, his greatest skill was having a vision and mobilizing cross-disciplinary groups, collaborators, to come together to create those incredible things that changed our world, all right? They understood it. With that in mind, we've got to learn to collaborate. We've got to celebrate diversity, different groups, different ideas. We've got to be able to exchange those ideas, and we have to recognize and build on the achievements of others, as opposed to trying to invent everything ourselves. Very important. An education activity that focuses only on the individual is destined to frustrate and fail. You think about that. In your band, if you focus only on the individual, you will be frustrated and you will fail. Does anybody doubt that? Anybody doubt that? No, excellent. Creativity is a mindset. Our, our objectives, your objectives as leaders, in terms of leadership, you've got to bring mental, intellectual, emotional freedom to all in order to create. You, when you get back home, have got to provide an environment. Your, your director, your teacher is the facilitator, but you're the catalyst. And you have to create an environment that is going to uh, allow process and discipline to bring those ideas to life. Can you foster creativity? Yes, you can. Most people think they can't because they don't consider themselves a creative person. I'm here to tell you, yes, you most certainly can. All right, two ways to think about creativity. How about the way you learn math, science, English? Let's look at English for a second. It took you about 12 years to actually somewhat learn the language, and then you finally, after 12 years, learned, took, maybe took a class, maybe, called creative writing. Does this sound familiar? That's our problem. We cram so much information that we told you how to use it, maybe too little too late. Music doesn't do that, okay? Very important. However, personal creativity, people work their best when they're doing something on a personal level, something they love, that's what you're here for. That's why the arts are so very, very powerful. They, we connect with a set of materials, a medium, and we do amazing things. Arts are our universal language. Now, we don't have time right now, but there are plenty of exercises and things you can do you can get involved with in your school, in your arts programs to help foster that idea of creativity. Okay, very, very, very important, okay? Extremely important. How about creating, helping set design, sound design for movie and film, okay? How many of you recognize you can import a video into GarageBand or any other similar type of program, digital auto workstation, and put your own sound effects in? Everybody knows what I'm talking about? Okay, there, again, there's an idea for creating a, a, a really unbelievable environment. Costuming, movement, lyrics, marketing, mind mapping. In this presentation, I've got a little link down here, okay? All right, I'm going to let you guys have this presentation if you want it. I'll give it to you in PowerPoint form. I'll show you at the very end. Click that. There's a whole bunch of mind mapping tools. What is a mind map? There's one. What do you do with your sections when you get back home? Start documenting things. Here, take the big idea. And when people give it, respond to that, start putting it around it and create the map. All right, look at that. There we go. We're talking about theater. But I like this map. As you're staring at that, how many of you can tell you're going on a pretty incredible journey? Can you see that? I like this one. How many recognize words aren't even necessary here? How many of you get the point of that mind map? Wouldn't it be great to be able to talk and, and get influences, musical influences? Okay, really fascinating. Even the way you document for your sections for your band is a very important thing. Now, in here I've got a link for you, okay? Uh, on TED Talk, there is a, a guy by the name of Larry Lessig talks about laws that choke creativity and was Mr. Sousa right? John Philip Sousa, he was lobbying against recording technology because he thought it was going to change the music industry and there wouldn't be no longer any work for musicians. I'm not sure he was correct about that. All right? There's a really wonderful video for you to watch to really make you think, okay? I'm going to recommend a book to you, all right? Discipline Dreaming, a proven system to drive breakthrough creativity by Josh Lankner. Josh Lankner says in this book everything he needed to learn about, and this was a Fortune 500 bestseller in business, Everything he needed to learn about being successful in business, he learned playing alto saxophone. And he learned in the jazz ensemble, and he learned it at the Berklee School of Music when he went to college.
and he went from there into being an incredible business success. He took what we learned in our arts education and transferred it into other realms. Really fascinating. What do we need out of you? And, and as we wrap this up, you are our future. You have to carry this torch that my generation has handed to you. You've got to be ready for it. Okay? Art and artistic performance are, not, are for all, not just the chosen few. You've got to be looking at what we do. It's for all. Ms. Duty made that very clear to us a while ago. That's truly amazing. It is for all. If everybody has it, it truly is the universal language. And we can use it as a medium to affect great change. Arts and music, quite frankly, now are no longer on the fringe. We're the keystone of the curriculum. Do we do math and band? Yes or no? Do we do English and band? Yes. I will tell you, and I, I had the slides here, but we didn't have time to show you. I can take the Common Core Standards, put the math Common Core Standards up that your teachers have to adhere to, and the English Common Core Standards, and you'll look at it and you go, oh my God, we hit that every day in band class. We address math and Common Core, math and English standards every day in our band rooms. That's how powerful we are. Marching band, the other performing arts, okay, include visual, oral art forms, and all of our core subjects. Do we use science? Yes or no? Yes. Absolutely, okay? All right, performing arts not only foster creativity, but put that on display for all to see. That is very powerful. As soon as we put it on display, we begin to change the world. Music ensembles require an inherent leadership structure that must be there. You're part of that leadership structure, all right? You've got to nurture that structure at every level, all the way from the section, the section leader, all the way up through drum majors, through band presidents, et cetera, et cetera. We must respect and nurture that leadership structure and, and then cloak it in a creative atmosphere. If we allow people to be creative, they're vested now. Think that through. Now it's theirs. They're vested. They've helped create that, and they will protect that to the nth degree. All right? Leaders who do not listen will eventually be surrounded by people who have absolutely nothing to say. What does that tell you? You've got to be a great listener. You've got to be a great collaborator. You want to change the world. It's going to come through vision and collaboration. Having the motivational skills to get the world to see your vision and follow you. That's a very, very big deal. Collaborate and create. Lead, ladies and gentlemen, with creativity as a focus of your daily activities. Our future literally depends upon it. I was not kidding when I laid out those things at the beginning of this presentation. You're not going to want, want the world that we're gonna lead. We have to prepare you. You're not gonna want that world. We've gotta make sure that you are prepared. Now, there's an email address. This was a lot of information. There's some links in there. If you want a copy of this, I will send you the PowerPoint. I'm not gonna be a PDF. I'm just going to send you the PowerPoint. The links will be in there. If you want to do a presentation on this and talk to your school, talk to your friends, your family, your administration, take my name off on it, put yours, and, and adapt it however you want. Okay? Everybody in here, all you've got to do is send me an email, tell me Leadership Symposium, okay, Music for All Leadership, and I will send you the link and send that to you. Okay? Have I at least made you think about something you might not have thought before this presentation? Yes or no? Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, I believe in you. We believe in you. You are the best and the brightest of your generation. That's why you're here. Okay? Create, lead, and change the world. Thank you very much.